What's good? My name is Inspirational, and I got a special, special guest for us today. Hello, everyone. Hi. But go yeah, ahead don't and worry about yourself. it. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it either. Um, you can just call me Lanx. Um, Lanx you, I guess, on my other platforms. And I'm really excited to be here today. Thank you for inviting me, Inspirational. No, thank you for having me. So <laughs> I've always called you Lanx or Lon, so I'll try to say oh, really? Lanx you. Uh, yeah, just because, oh. like, I've never had to say your name out loud, right? So that's just... Yeah, no, go in... <laughs> So if I, like, mispronounce it because that's what's, like, programmed in my head, uh -huh. just let me know. Yeah, that's fine. So okay. tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're a huge part of the Purple Hyacinth community. Yes, I am. You guys are one of the big so... reasons that I joined the, what, the band back in the yeah, day? Yeah, I'm really glad. Yeah, okay. So honestly, it was just, like, a series of... It was a series of events that kind of got me to where I am in the community right now. Back when episode 40 of season one released. Oh, yes. Okay, so here's the very short story. So I was like, I, I cried for episode 40. That was the first time I've ever cried for like something I read. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you watch a movie or something, you can always have like emotional soundtracks or like voice acting and like they can make it emotional for you, right? But yeah. with Purple Hyacinth, episode 40 was the first time I cried purely from the events of a story and not because it was they were trying to make me cry, you know? Like, I just mm -hmm. saw Kieran killing all the, like, prisoners, and I was just so sad for him. When that happened, I wrote an essay, pretty much. I posted it on Band. And then after that, I just got more and more involved with the community because, like, people were, like, um, talking about my essays and, like, I was responding to them. And then during that time, around, like, the end of season two, I wrote an essay for like 43, like 46, and a 10,000 word one for for the scene's finale. Like, for the finale, like that. yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was just so invested that I really wanted to share my thoughts with the community. And through that, I think I got to meet a lot of people. I think because PH is such like a thought-provoking story, being in the community, you get lots of opportunities to like discuss with people a lot of things, right? Of course, so, yeah. Yeah, like we always end up really deep in discussion. And through that, I just ended up like, I guess, getting really involved. And then through that, I also got the opportunity to become a mod for the Discord server, the official mm -hmm. one back in the day, Purple Garden. Yeah. And then, yep, just more and more talking, <laughs> more and more interactions. And then I guess now I'm just like here in the community where I know everyone kind of. Yeah, that, that's really awesome. Yes. And I mean, it's mm -hmm. one of the biggest reasons why I got invested more into yeah. the story. I think the same thing, it was 40 that made uh -huh. me fast pass for the first time. No, same, literally same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that end of the chapter, I was just like, there's more, right? I can, I can, I can mm -hmm. like get more coins mm -hmm. and I can find <laughs> out what happens. And then we end at 43 as well, which is also... yeah. Oh, what a what an episode. And I was like, oh I God, have to yeah. talk about this somehow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was actually really funny for me because um, 40, when 40 came out, 43 was the one that came out for Fast Pass, right? Yeah. So then I was here crying for 40, but then I started hearing <laughs> so many things about 43. I'm like, what the hell? This, like, how worse does it get? So oh, then man. that's when I Fast Pass. Know. That's when I finally came <laughs> in and had to Fast Pass. And I haven't not, not Fast Pass since, but I usually try to read like, uh, mm -hmm. Especially with the beginning of season two, I only read like one chapter at a time, tried to ingest it as much yeah. as possible and then move on to the next one. Yeah, that's a really good way to read. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, that's also why I I think I, I like it better when we're reading it as the sap chapters come out week by week. So we have mm -hmm. the time to really like look at it and absorb it before moving on. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like. Mm -hmm. My go-to usually when I read manga or webtoons or anime, even, especially ongoing series, I kind of yeah. just spend like five minutes and then, you know, I get the investment out of it. I get the emotions out of it. And then I kind of forget about it for a week. But with Purple Hyacinth, I don't, right? Like, yeah, we talk about it at 9 p.m. Eastern <laughs> Standard Time if you're there on Mondays mm -hmm. all the way to Sunday, even Monday itself, just talking yeah. about various parts of the episode. and. I feel like those kind of moments and memories that you share with others resonates with you a lot more than just, you know, putting yeah, in a couple exactly. minutes. Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay, so the topic of this video, which should go up as 75 goes out, uh, I made the kind of rough assumption that chapter 75 is halfway through season two, assuming that the entirety of season two is about 50 episodes, just like season one. And we wanted to kind of talk about the first half of season two, how it compares yeah. to season one, and how 
we might or what what else we might get for the second half of season two. Mm -hmm. So my first question for you is how do you think the first half of season two kind of stacks up with the two separate halves of episode of, yeah. of season one itself? Yeah. So I think um one of the first things you probably notice instinctively is that the first half of season two is a lot faster paced than I would say the entirety of season one. I think we can both agree oh, yes. on that. Oh yeah. Okay. Um this actually makes sense though because I've actually heard that season 1 was actually like season 2 was actually supposed to be the quote unquote real story of Purple Hyacinth but then um and season 1 was supposed to be the setup but then they decided to stretch out the setup to like f completely fill a whole season before moving on to season 2. So it makes sense for the faster pacing of season 2. And if we look at the two halves of season 1 for the first half of season one, I think, like, up until maybe, like, when they find Ansel's pictures, like, that's around episode 24, like, 25, right? Yeah, around there, yeah. I think this was, uh, we actually honestly didn't get a lot of progress with the investigation, and I honestly think the first half of season one was meant more so we can get, like, attached to the characters, and we can see what kind of people the cast are, you know? Mm -hmm. Because this is when we find out about, like, who Lauren is and who she is to her co-workers and her friends. And we find out and we get a look at the, her dynamic with Kieran, like as complete strangers first. I agree. And then the second half of season one, I think it gets a little bit personal because the first half of season one, if we like end it with Ansel's pictures, that's when the first, that's the first time a, a mission goes wrong and Lauren has to like deal with something personal to her, you know? Yeah. And then I think... Towards the end of season one, things definitely start ramping up. I honestly think that the second, the first half, the, okay, this is kind of like confusing me. Yeah, one yeah, and two. Yeah. Okay, we can do um, like second, season two, part one, if that makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, season one, part two. Yeah. <laughs> um, season one, part two, I think is a, actually a lot more closely related to season two, part one, if you know what I mean. Because yeah. season one, part two sets up a lot of the stakes for season two part one i definitely agree especially with what what we get in the second part two of season one right we get definitely. the tower we get the mm -hmm. monster episode we get the finale sake yeah. moving in and even stuff like harvey's murder or belladonna's involvement and um kim and will getting the mission to find loon like these are all very important like pieces of the story that we get more of in season two I agree. And all of that was actually set up in part two of season one, right? Because Belladonna didn't get introduced yeah. until the 30s. So we didn't even yeah, have exactly. her in the story early on. Mm -hmm. And she plays a huge part in uh, <laughs> season two in so far. In the recent arc. Yep. Yes. So for me, I actually think the second, or sorry, wow, the part one mm -hmm. of season two is actually kind of split into two separate, I, mean, I guess, three separate arcs, right? There's the little intro yeah. arc that we get from 50 to 54. Then we get Camellia from 55 to 60-ish. And yeah. then we get a little, like, intermission, and then we start the circus arc, right? I feel like... With a bit of Great Chapel in between. <laughs> yeah, with a bit of Great Chapel in the 60s in between. So I feel like up until the end of Camellia is all kind of set up for the entirety of Season 2 itself. So I felt that that actually moved a little mm -hmm. slower until we got out of Camellia and then things yeah. picked up real fast, like very, very fast. fast. I honestly think, I feel like the it was almost intentional in the way that like the first half of season two, part one, it was like we were getting slowly eased back into Purple Hyacinth after the three month break, right? Yeah. Yep. Like we I still agree. have like the Lauren Kieran confrontation and then we have them like making a shaky truce and then like it's just like it's like casual like it's pretty casual like the investigation for the carmine camellia it's focused less about like their actual investigation and i think one of the more significant things that come out of it is kieran apologizing to lauren while they're locked in the storage room you know like it's all yeah yeah and that was a huge moment for yeah, their dynamic like, it's not focused on the investigation yet or like the truth that they're gonna uncover later and then it's only after, and it's only after they actually go to circus, investigate Great Chapel, like the Great Chapel, the, the Orion and Sons massacre, stuff like that. Then they start finding out, like after the character aspect of it is kind of gone through, then we get to the plot aspect of it. And I feel like it does parallel well with season yeah. one as well, because 
like you said, for the first part mm -hmm. of season one, it focused on the character interactions, especially the dynamics between Lauren and Kirian. And we get that same thing in the first half of part one of season two. I know these True. like subcategories are getting a little long. Wait, that's, actually, that's a really good observation. So I feel like that kind of parallel works <laughs> really well. And we get the really personal yeah. moments, right? In the first half of season one, we have the dream sequence right at the end of the first half in yeah. like 24 or something where we learn about Dylan, even though we didn't mm -hmm. know it was Dylan back then. And we get similar stuff here, especially, uh, I want to say it was either 54 or 64, where... Uh, 54, 54. 54, yeah. So we learn that pretty early, and it becomes relevant all the way, almost 15 yeah. chapters later, maybe 20 chapters later, in this most yeah. current chapter in 75. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of your favorite moments, oh or uh, maybe an entire episode... <laughs> of this uh this first half here so we're talking about the entirety of season two so far right yes entirety of season two hmm. so far you know this is very tough right <laughs> i mean okay. you can you can you can pick a bunch of them so i have yeah. i have five chat episodes that i think were All my right. top five obviously i'm not going to talk about each one in depth but i can go and just list out right. them um, for you how about you list them first to give me some time to think about this i guess the bottom mm -hmm. number five on the yeah. list is 50 which was the introduction to season two, because one, Kyrian getting involved in the 11th precinct was yeah. uh, a shocker. <laughs> Even though we got a little bit of it hinted at the end of the finale, but there was so much going yeah. on in the finale of season one. I mean, that's that's our least of our worries, but we get full context of that. We see a lot of lies uh -huh. and a lot of tension. Then I guess number four for me is oh, 70. Yeah. And that's because Athena is <laughs> back, obviously. But we also get the start True. of the actual circus. And for me, I feel like the circus show is a huge distraction to what's uh -huh. actually going on. Like, they are the front that's put on. So while the entire plot happens underneath them, you know, both metaphorically and yep. maybe physically, because uh, the tunnel is an underground area. And the visual, I think that vertical panel of Lauren and Kieran yeah. entering into the circus as it engulfs uh -huh. them in the blackness. Yeah. I love that. I love... I love some of the vertical panels that uh, yeah. Sophism and obviously F has some play and, mm -hmm, you know, definitely. some suggestions, but Sophism is the one that draws yeah. them and it's beautiful. Okay, so that's four. Um, I think three would be 64. The lullaby, right? Two would be 54. Yeah, the lullaby. Uh, we got more mm -hmm. of William and William is playing a huge. I don't know if he's playing a huge role, but he's getting a it's lot more right. exposure yeah. in the season so far. And then number two is 54, mm -hmm. where we learn about the locked apartment of a uh, kirian and his mm -hmm. humanity and then the peak is the most recent fast uh -huh. path chapter 75 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> um we have a lot of overlaps because when i think about my favorite moments my first thoughts are 50 like you mentioned before just the tension of it mm -hmm. is so good <laughs> and then see like this is the first time we've ever seen kirian so subdued and like almost scared you know like it was so interesting oh i yes. just loved it so much he has so yeah. much hesitation in his actions and his you know, mannerisms that we've, yeah. we've never seen because we've always seen him with this his confidence, like, the facade of, you know, yeah. coolness. And so it was an incredibly interesting change of things for once. And then I would have to say 54 as well, because I think um, in Purple Hyacinth, none of the characters are open about like who, like who they are and what they're really feeling and their past. That's true. Yeah, there's exactly. a lot of miscommunication <laughs> or like no communication at all. <laughs> exactly. It was like a really incredible experience to see like both Kieran and Lauren like separate but like but paralleling each other. You know, they're both of them are so deep in thought and in their most vulnerable moments. Mm -hmm. We see Kieran finally open a, open up his locked door first of all. And then I think that room is such a vulnerable part of him because it shows what he values the most, which is humanity. And it shows his desperation to yeah. like maintain his humanity that he draws what he draws to keep his humanity and then we also see lauren like deep in thought and trying to mentally recover from everything that happened which is 43 and then getting knocked out by sake and then getting ptsd dream of atst and then seeing kieran appear at yeah. an office that all happened uh. within like 48 hours right and that was just so good for mm -hmm. me for us, it happens really slow, but for the actual characters, it's all within like yep. a week or even less, right? Like, like these events are happening one after yep, the yep. other after the other. And then, yeah, next would be 64 for me as well, because like 
I just said this, but yeah, I'm a sucker for seeing characters for who, what they really are and seeing them vulnerable. And 54 was, no, um, 64, oh, I meant. Yeah. 64 was the best because we get all of them um, as, as Will plays the piano, we see all of them in a moment of introspection and reflection, right? And that was just so good. Like, mm -hmm. um, we see Will with his flashbacks, we see Lauren with her flashbacks, and then we see Kieran with, with a flashback as well. And then, even though Kim doesn't have a flashback, we get, like, a little bit of insight into her, too. And I feel like Sophism really uh, explained that little moment yeah. for us much more clearly. Because I, I looked at it and I was like, oh, like, this is a really... I guess like beautiful shot and I can see Kim teetering back and forth on the wall. But I, I mean, we don't really have the context yeah. of the full story, right? We don't know Kim's entire arc. So Sophism gave yeah. really good insight for that little moment. And then let me think besides those, I think I would have to say, Hmm. Is it 69? I feel like it's 69. I feel yeah. like you would like 69 a lot. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because, well, we get two really cool things. Firstly, we get, well, this is after, um, Kieran and Lauren have worked a bit more, right? So their relationship has recovered mm -hmm. a bit, a bit more from more from episode fifty, and we finally see right. And Lauren kind of gets the a shift in yeah, her mindset exactly. a little bit, not too much, but yeah. a little bit. And then go ahead. Oh, yeah. uh, where, where was I? Yeah, and then, then we also see the return of Kieran's like relaxed, lighthearted, confident front, which is it's nice. It's nice. Yeah, and we also oh, yeah. get the fortune telling prophecy. <laughs> And that was something that, yeah, of and that Hecate. was something that freaked out the entire fandom for quite a while when we first saw it. That was really <laughs> oh like, yeah, like when I, um, you know, when I was reading the chapter, the moment um she started like telling the prophecy and like reading Lauren's future, I was writing out a transcript of it so I can analyze it later while I was reading. <laughs> it was just so funny. And then I think yeah, so sixty nine. I think it just it was really fun to analyze and freak out. But I think it also gives us a hint of like what to expect for the future. Because um, mm -hmm. something I noticed is that uh, in the prophecy that gets told to Lauren, there's a mention of like a tower, right? It's like, oh, the future, your tower, yeah. there's a tower, but it's been built on truths and lies, on um, on lies and dishonesty. And it, Delusions and And it'll get struck down yeah. by the lightning bolt of truth, stuff like that. And then 75 mm -hmm. is called Tumbling Tower. The Lauren's power of truth is yeah i made that yeah, little right? connection so too cool. right yeah and then now this makes me wonder how is everything else right. from the prophecy gonna get shown through the story you know especially that thing about a betrayal yeah because we still have the yeah. future yeah the betrayal and we have mm -hmm. the death right those are the two things that are kind of yeah up in the air so far and those are also the two things that the fandom is most worried about <laughs> <laughs> yeah yep most oh, definitely but i have to say episode 71 where uh, Fierce Flame, where Belladonna murders Tim Sake. I honestly really enjoyed that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not because... It was yeah, such a like, shock. Know, like, the shock and the adrenaline I got from that was honestly really fun. Like, it's not like I have anything specific against Tim Sake besides him just being, like, a bad person. It's just, like, it's like the moment yeah. Bella killed him, I knew, like, wow, things are getting real now. The leader is finally, like, taking action. Well, I mean, we don't know if the leader is That's taking true. action here, right? Because it could just be That's Belladonna true. taking uh, action. But I, I agree, like, I, I was not expecting a yeah, death exactly. this quickly. And what does it mean for the future, right? Like, after Tim Sake died in 71, like, all the way up until this current chapter, like, I was like, mm -hmm. who's gonna die next? Like, right? what, what is she gonna do? Like, the excitement is just too on? much. It's too much fun. The sad part is that, so for context for people that are listening in, so 71 was out today, yesterday, for everyone. And I, I kind of forgot about Tim Sake. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, no matter how much of the rush that I got when I read it, when I first read it, I was just like, oh, yeah, this is the chapter. Yeah. It's from poor Sake. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I, I have to say, I'm not, I'm not like, devastated that he died. It, his death was more entertaining to me than anything. <laughs> Been sad. Like I understand mm -hmm. that he's gone. I wanted more from him, but I understand yeah. his role in the story isn't as big as what we yeah. want it to be. Obviously, mm -hmm. so it's okay. Uh, another, the fun thing about his death is that um, Lauren is very suspicious relating to that now, and that's even more fun because now we have to see how Lauren's gonna like reassure everyone that no, Harvey died in my office. And I oh, have a yeah. thing against Tim Sake, and he died under the same circumstances as Harvey in a place that I just was. But it's, it's not I me, swear I swear. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> like, I can't wait to see how she's going to deal with that. Yeah, and it's cool that Kieran actually yeah. picked up on that immediately. And he was like, yeah, okay, get like, we need to take care of this. Yeah. You need to leave. Obviously, she, she's not going to, but yeah, she needs to. Yeah, exactly. To. It just adds, like, such a big factor of, like, what's going to happen next that I really enjoyed when I first saw his death. And I feel like our authors do a really good job at showing us the consequences of uh -huh. actions, especially with the kind of story that we're in. Uh, the thing that made me realize this the most was I believe in 74 uh -huh. when we got Sandman back and he started talking to Lauren and how if Lauren and Kirian waited even a couple minutes, even the next day, they could have seen Anslow and Sandman yeah. have the interaction and exchange the photo and get so much That's more true. insight onto it. And it's only because like mm -hmm. they don't know all the information, right? Like there's only so much that they can gather from their end. This is all the things that are in play working against and together just to create yeah, exactly. this amazing narrative. Across season two, I say those are the moments that stick out the most for me. But obviously I enjoyed a lot of other things. Oh yeah. I mean I, I enjoy every single Kim <laughs> interaction. Like set right? fifty three yeah. was an amazing episode for me. I loved Kim getting lost yeah, in amazing. her own <laughs> district just to prove a point more kim appreciation i really love the way she dealt with with mm -hmm. the question of like what would you do if lauren was loon to will in episode 63 yeah right like it was it was both like funny I, I agree. she's like will i and then it was such a beautiful panel it looks like a confession but then she's like i'm loon <laughs> and it's, both, yeah. like, it's so like, character for her <laughs> to just say something so random like that right and but it's also it poses a good question of like, what would you actually do if someone close to you was Loon? And that was one of the, like, that's honestly like, I don't think people talk about a lot, but that's a Kim moment for me that I really love. Oh, I agree. And especially, I mean, one, the yeah. lighting was awesome. Two, in the it's snow, beautiful. their outfits were great. And on top of that, Kim had this really yeah. like layered interaction <laughs> with William. On top of just declaring Loon and trying to see his interaction, she was also yeah. just throwing him on the ground and like, you know, breaking him down both exactly. physically and mentally <laughs> like it's just great and that kind of gave a setup for the rest of william that mm -hmm. we got in the following uh, chapters and we really yeah. saw him oh, break, speaking of down. william though like we, he did not get he's one of the main yes. four obviously right but he honestly didn't get a lot of focus at all mm -hmm. in season one right no not the one only bit time that he got any sort of spotlight was a faithful friend i think episode 24 when he was like, that was with the yeah, shop. She mentioned her mom, and then he froze about it, right? And then we, we and that's when we find out that mm -hmm. something is up with his mom, but we don't learn anything about it. Honestly, that is in character for Will because he wouldn't he wouldn't want to tell anyone about his struggles. He says he's fine and he handled it, so he doesn't open up to anybody. Just like how we don't get anything about this until very yeah. later on in season two. They do a good job. Yeah. But once we start learning about him, then we realize like wow his, his life is not easy <laughs> it's it's not that great pretty terrible and it, it's it's impressive that he's put yeah. up so well that we've seen earlier in the yeah. season right or in season one he's put up a really good front to show that everything's okay even though exactly. it's not right oh man oh and and like although i don't i mm -hmm. don't love will that much like, I, I still don't, like, yeah. really love him, but I understand, like, the kind of struggles that he goes through is very um, personal and yeah. very, you know, anyone exactly. could have this kind of issue. And that kind of helps a mm. lot of people connect with like, him. Like, between, like, issues. bad boy Kieran and, like, lo and like, uh, like friendly, energetic Kim, like, Will, like, I think he tends not to stand out yeah. as much, right? But I honestly find it, like, kind of admirable how, like, he he obviously has, like, this whole backstory and the struggle that he's been dealing with, right? But we don't get to see it at all until, like, really later on. Yeah, and we kind of see, like, small, small hints on it mm -hmm. now that I'm, you know, reflecting more on Will, right? Uh, in the beginning of season two, we have Will actually... Uh, one of the big things that I was, I was having an issue with him mm -hmm. in season one was, like, he's lieutenant. Like, why yeah. isn't he, you know, putting up that kind of authoritative front oh, and be more yeah. like orderly mm -hmm. almost right because that's that's what he's supposed yeah. to be in the hierarchy of the whole thing and it wasn't until lauren got the concussion that he actually took action True. for something and we kind of learn mm -hmm. with stefan that you know he just got promoted because of his father it wasn't yeah. something that he earned so he didn't feel fit mm -hmm. for the role and i felt that when he made that claim to Lauren to put her in the nurse's office. I feel like that was his first step to actually That's be true. like be more assertive of himself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Speaking of that, episode seventy-five, we got a lot. Right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, yeah, let's get stuff. into it. So I, I think this is really <laughs> cool because we get a lot of big reveal, not only from Lauren's side, but also Will's side, right? It was, it was almost a parallel, honestly. Yeah. And then... I feel a lot of parallels with William, especially in the shots of the the vertical panels, the ones mm-hmm. that I, like stretch. Uh, a lot of them mimic the kind of stuff that we got from oh. Lauren in season one. And I, I, I love that little interaction. Right, because William and Lauren are the only ones that have the, uh, when they're walking yeah. alone in yeah. a long hallway. For Lauren, it was when she was walking in the street stalls as she was approaching Tim Sake. Oh. And for William, it was him walking down the hallway, I think it was 71, True. to his mother's room. And both his mother and Tim Sake kind of yeah. have a similar overbearing influence and pressure yeah. on Definitely. our respective Wait, that's character. very true. Wow. Yeah, and then I think the usage of that like big long horizontal walking panel, it just shows like like the yeah. loneliness kind of, you know, like they're just here, they're so small, and the world around mm-hmm. them is so big. And they have to put up and take responsibility for their family and yeah, for exactly. themselves based on you know the situation mm-hmm. that they're in. But okay, so um, I mentioned seventy five because we we're on topic of will be more assertive, right? Like um. His confrontation yeah. with Raphael was honestly like really satisfying for me <laughs> because it felt good, right? We saw all the pent up stress and like yeah. pain that Will has to put up with for mm-hmm. over 10 years. Yeah. And Raphael is just like, Will. yeah, uh, sorry, like, yeah, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> like, come on. And then like we see like Will like full out yelling at him and swearing like, like he needed this. He really needed something like this. Otherwise, it went, he wouldn't have lasted for too long. And yeah. then I was like, okay, I would have liked if Raphael had a bigger reaction than just blank staring and, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was- I feel like he's almost as disconnected uh-huh. to his family Honestly, as Stefan bro. is to his own wife. And that's why we didn't yeah. get that much of it. Yeah, but it was just really nice to see Will's emotion out in the open for once. I agree. And poor yeah. Kim had to... I mean, she was watching, but yeah, and she got to see that side. But I feel like that's a small minor moment because yeah. it it was mainly between Will and Raphael. I guess my biggest question is like, Raphael really didn't do an awesome job like covering up his presence, right? Because like, even when he had the uh-huh. bandana in the like performance, Lauren was like, hey, like, familiar. it's kind of <laughs> familiar. Like, have I seen him before? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, what the heck? Like, yeah. Apollo, Raphael, like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then he's flat out, like, st- like so straight up flexing his piano skills. Like, who else plays piano? <laughs> who has blonde hair? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's funny. Like, it was such an obvious parallel that, like, I, like, yeah, tried no, to ignore it as long as Raphael possible. When Raphael introduced you know. um, playing piano in the circus episode, like, people were theorizing about it. And I was like, wait, mm-hmm. no way. <laughs> no way, right? It's just a coincidence. It was like, nah. Like... Oh my god. It was, a, <laughs> it was a surprise. It was a pleasant surprise for me to find out that we actually are right. We actually can get some theories right after all. Exactly. And it kind of goes with Sandman versus mm-hmm. Dylan for the photographer and how Soph was just like, yeah, like, how do you not know this already? It's like, yeah. come on, like, you've been making it vague for so long. Like, of course, we're yeah. not going to pick it up immediately. <laughs> like... Oh my god. Oh, anyways, um, there's one point I wanted to bring up. Will mentions 10 yep. years, right? He's Raphael's been gone for ten years. Wait, yeah, I've been waiting. Um, I've been waiting for an explanation for the past ten years. So that's presumably when Raphael disappeared. Yeah. And ten years is also yeah, when the, TS- the ATST happened, right? Like this. Ten- whenever I hear ten years, exactly. I just think ATST, like that big event that caught, ruined everything. Yeah. So now I wonder if like he used the ATST to cover up his his like running away, or like I don't know. It could be coincidence too. So I guess the thing is, he couldn't do that if he oh, left true. a letter, right? If he didn't leave a letter, then maybe he could have yeah. like used like the missing mm-hmm. as him to get away. But he speci- I mean, we don't know what Said. the letter states, but there was a letter. And I guess the the thing that I picked up when William said like, oh, like how many times are you going to run away? Is like, oh, this isn't the first time, true. right? 10 years ago wasn't the first time that it happened. It's happened before. And we also get a little line from his mom saying like, Raphael, you're not leaving, That's are you? True. Like even she, in her good like mind, also experienced mm-hmm. Raphael leaving at some point. Damn, Raphael's not being a good family member. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we don't know what like we don't know what the what yeah. the issue is. Is it is it Stefan? Mm-hmm. Is it something else? Right? Because I have a theory that Stefan might be an apostle. Oh, so really? 
I mean, if he was an apostle, then would he want his own son to quote unquote run away or That's use true. his son? I, I don't true. know. I think the general, well, my general idea of this is it, it could be from the pressure of like being the son of Stefan, right? Exactly. I mean, that's some immense pressure, like I. Mm -hmm. But I also wonder if, like, his running away, he joined the circus, and the circus has ties to the fam side, obviously, right? Like, I just want, like, I don't know, maybe yeah. this is just my theorist overthinking brain talking, but like, 10 years is also when the eight fam side became, like, announced and active and publicized. So I, I'm just wondering if there's some sort of connection, maybe, yeah. like, of all places to join, he joined the circus, you know? And then the thing is, the circus. We know that there, most of them are orphans from Grey Chapel. They're they're poor people who had nowhere else to go mm -hmm. from fifteen years ago. But then yeah. Raphael, he's from a rich family. He he like I wonder just I just wonder how he ended up in the circus. So I yeah that's a that's a good yeah. And what's interesting is Kim used to visit the circus often oh, wait, when she was really? younger because she would she said she oh. remembered. Yeah, in when we first got them setting up at the park or wherever. Kim had the little line. She was like, oh, yeah, I remember, like, seeing them when oh. I was little. I, I don't know. Like, there's no such okay. thing as a throw I see, I see. with the series. So mm -hmm. I'm sure it has some yeah. sort of just... relevance or something. Maybe it was just to, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know mm -hmm. why Raphael would go there. So many mysteries. He doesn't fit the demographic to, all right, let's talk about uh, Snapdragon and uh, oh my God. Phantom yeah. Side. Okay, one thing I like to say is that <laughs> I actually suspected that the fan side became Snapdragon. I'm um, no Snapdragon became the Salmon Spice because mm -hmm. I always Lauren thought that there were rival factions, right? But it was always kind of strange to me how yeah. they have the same goal, pretty much, is to overthrow the monarchy and establish a new system, a new higher, like a new system. Yeah, yeah just one is more extreme than <laughs> so the other, like, right? Yeah. Well, I don't see any point of them fighting each other. Like they would more likely join together and become stronger, right? I so like mm -hmm. I was. Pretty sure that Lauren believing that the fan side was a rival faction was actually purposely meant to throw us off from the truth, which is that Snapdragon became fan side. No, I agree because it's that's not the first time, like that's not the first time that they brought up rival mm -hmm. merchants because it, it originated True. from Harvey and Kim yep. in like episode seventeen, where both of them were like, oh maybe it's like an ex fan totally side member that. that you know blah 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 blah, and <laughs> Lauren's like, oh like stop being so smart. And then Harvey specifically said, oh, like, it could be a rival merchant competing against them and waiting for blah, 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 blah. And, like, at that time, it seemed like, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we didn't know it's what Harvey was, all. right? We, we just thought he was just yeah. you know, a regular patrol unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just an innocent little boy. But now it seems like that is, like, the established True. lore for newer members of the Phantom Scythe. Maybe they think that I there's see. rival merchants and that's what's spread around. But... The leader, especially mm -hmm. that we learned in 75, is that, you know, he killed off most of the surviving members of Snapdragon. Yep. Any connections to him, so. And speaking of connections to the leader, Lauren's parents. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You go, you I, know. yeah. All right, yeah. No, no go Lauren. ahead. Lauren, <laughs> oh my god. I, I just, like, it's like, she was beating herself up so much when she found out that her parents' deaths weren't accidents, right? And she's like, wow, I really was the blinds of all the whole time. Yeah. And then she found out, like, oh, like, my parents' car was at the ATSD. Like, there's something deeper going on, and my parents might be related. Like, she was so, like, ups like upset about this because she's like, I was so blind the entire time. But now she finds out her parents were literal apostles. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so, like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. And then all her, like, uh -huh. misguided, like, it's vengeance so and pain. Yeah. isn't like, pointed oh in the right God. area potentially mm -hmm. and and that's like, heartbreaking i genuinely wonder how she's gonna react because like yeah, lauren like, is the type of person yeah go ahead yeah how is she like, i i like, have no idea is she gonna be like emotionally <laughs> like stable stable like like no lauren is strong right she's been through a lot and she she can control herself like, she has a good strong grip on like mm -hmm. herself but it's just like wow like like if i were lauren i would just like die <laughs> I hope she reflects yeah. on Hecate's prophecy because this is where the tumbling tower kind of fits in because when when Hecate talked about it, she said something along the lines of uh, people have mm -hmm. or will betray you. I think Lauren's yep. parents are the ones that betrayed her mm -hmm. in not telling their involvement. 
thus shifting her mindset into thinking that the phantom side yeah. is all evil and they're the cause of all the pain, which mm-hmm. that's half true. And their actions can't be changed yeah. because, well, obviously they're dead, probably. So it all exactly. depends on what Lauren's response is to those actions. And this is kind of the decisive moment. Is she going to continue down her path and stay parallel with Kyrian's goal? Or is she going to diverge? And what's that mm-hmm. going to do to their dynamic or their, Definitely. you know, their goals in general? Yep. I don't know. It's very, Man. it's, very it's a very good episode. Lots of <laughs> food for thought. All right. One more thing yeah. is that when I first heard that, that her parents were apostles, mm-hmm. like when it was confirmed, my first thought was like, does that mean they knew about the ATSD? If they were, because if they were like pretty much one of the founding members of the fan side, did they know about oh. the ATSD? Like, bruh, because the ATSD is like, yeah. like is was such a devastation for so many people, especially Lauren, right? So if they were actually involved in that, that would be a big yikes, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? But then I, if I thought about that, yeah, like, do you want to go? I don't know if they are involved in it. <laughs> That's a, like um, I don't I don't know. But, You're bringing um, up really good points. Question, um, that <laughs> Go ahead though. Lauren spent as a child spent the entire day on the day of the ATST with Dylan, who were Dylan and Dad who were at the station, and mm-hmm. I don't think her parents would let her do that if they knew about it. You know what I mean? So I guess the question is, did they oh. even know where she was? Right, because. Um, her, Dylan's father said like, oh, like, you know, your parents wouldn't want you to blah, Uh blah, 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 blah. I I don't remember the exact line. It was from the finale, but did they even know that she was there? And like, they weren't supposed to be at the station themselves. No, because they're, the car was there. They weren't there. That that was my understanding of it. Wait, the car, her her parents car. Because the car had, the car had Robin Delaney. Yeah. The parents car had Robin Delaney, Abel Sandman. Yeah sake mm-hmm. and potentially some kids right those those were the yeah, people in the car it wasn't the parents in the car because I, f- I feel like the crash yeah the crash was like two weeks around two weeks after the atsd yeah yeah but um that so would maybe they do oh my god that would be kind of scary to think about. oh my god <laughs> because, no <laughs> yeah. but, um, like one of my uh like a small theory i have about this is that like obviously they were killed by the leader right so i was thinking like they agreed yeah. to form the phantom, the phantom scythe, and they became apostles. But I was thinking maybe if they didn't know about the ATSC, and then they saw how devastating it was, maybe they had second thoughts about like the whole phantom scythe thing and the whole violence thing. And that's and because of that, the leader, that's what caused the leader to kill them because they were showing hesitance and mm-hmm. doubt, and that would like be likely to lead to betrayal, which is what the leader is the most scared of. So that's why the leader killed them off. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, I guess this comes down to yeah. Sandman. Yeah, why, right. How does he know so he's much? So sus. He's like, so sus. Like, okay. Right, like the the episode right before. Right, he said, "Oh, like I had to come in because it was yeah, a favor by, by from sake. Uh, I was forced into it." <laughs> and then he's going around like knowing everything, and then he straight up kills Lauren's parents. He's like, "Oh, the leader made me do it." Like I I don't understand what like I don't yeah, understand what yeah. Sandman's trying to do. It's so funny, but okay. The one reassurance, yeah. The, well, the one reassurance I have is that Lauren can hear lies, and he has lied a bit during this conversation. That's the one reassurance I have. Are can lies get picked oh. up in questions? No, I, they wouldn't. I think I don't think they would. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Because he asked really? some very strategic questions, and obviously they didn't get picked up in red. Yeah. Okay. I I have to look back in the episode, but I remember he would. He asked him, like, he was kind of being a tool, especially in 75. He's like, oh, like, did they not teach you this in the academy? Like, how do you not know this? I was like, yo, chill. Like, you've been stalking her this entire time. Obviously, you know what she did. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't I like Sam Man. Like, I understand your sentiments. <laughs> oh, man. Like, yeah. But okay, what we know for, for a fact is that he cut communications with the fam side a year ago, right? So I I've assumed that yes. he's like he's going rogue and like he's just doing whatever it is for his own interests and like mm-hmm. yeah. and taking down as and much of them. He as says possible he wants to turn himself when in. He goes down, right? And, wait, no, wait. Actually, no. Something I want to mention is actually um, mm-hmm. Santa. He said something changed a few weeks ago, and I have nothing else to lose. Do you remember that from episode seven? Yeah. 
Yeah, and that conflicted with him going rogue yeah. a year ago, right? Because there's that huge gap between him going rogue and whatever was yeah. holding him back or the like, blackmail that they had died, I'm assuming. Uh, I don't. Yeah, he's very uh, full of contradictions, but they're all true. So. Yeah. Oh, and one thing I feel like is going to happen is that that photograph that he has with Lauren and Kieran, that's proof, the, the proof of her involvement with Kieran. I feel like it's going to get out somewhere, mm-hmm. get leaked somewhere. <laughs> because this is way too dangerous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no yeah. way Sandman's going to just keep it hidden, you know, or, for like, himself, he, right? He yeah, might, that's or, hard I feel fact like so, Sandman right might there. bump into someone who might see the photo or, like, steal the photo or something. <sighs> Maybe, yeah. I mean, I'm predicting that <laughs> Sandman's going to die next, really next chapter. Die. But, and that's because... Well, no, no, it, it's so. So I, I didn't think he would actually reveal so much information oh, in this okay. episode. I thought he was going to die oh, okay. like, in seventy five, because because Lauren has like th- this cycle of her chasing after leads and information, and right before she gets all the information that she needs, <laughs> mm-hmm. the person or yeah. the evidence just dies or disappears. Oh. And I felt like that was going to happen again with Belladonna That's pulling true. up and just stabbing him. But yeah. this is the first like shift. Right, like this is the first time that Lauren actually and gets so much gets information out. Of <laughs> Poor Lauren. And yeah, and she's not the she, one that's the interrogator. She's yeah, actually she, the the captive in this case. This this like this episode threw me off completely. I I was I, so I'm hoping that Belladonna so, shows up. You know, sets like <laughs> Sandman on fire or yeah. something. I I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, like, you I'm know, really in a week. To see but... What's gonna happen in the future? Oh, another thing that I want to mention is that. Sandman wants the photograph, mm-hmm. right? That's his condition. He's like, oh, I, I promise not to yes. leak any of the photos or reveal anything if you just give me that photograph of the car, right? But that photograph is on Lauren's board right now. Yeah. Right? Tristan mm-hmm. definitely knows what's up. Basically. <laughs> like, it, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Lauren's pretty uh, dumb mm-hmm. putting up her board in some you know, plain view, but... <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so like that's the thing. Like, yeah, it's, I, it's no way it's gonna be that easy for her to just like make the deal and make the trade off. Like, yeah, we're good. Bye. Right. Exactly. Right. There's like, I I feel like Kyrian and Lauren have to set up like this setup for it. It's gonna be similar to what happens oh in God. Golden Clover. Right. Ansel was yeah. trying to meet up with Sandman. They're trying to exchange. Loon is trying to meet up with Sandman, uh, trying to give an exchange, and uh, someone's yeah. going to interrupt. I, I don't know who, but someone is. Exactly. Like, I can just imagine Lauren going back to her board to try to find the photo, and it's gone. And then, yeah, oh, what? It's what gone. Happened? Like, so for me, I think Tristan won't you don't think so? take the photo, though. No, because he doesn't want to raise suspicion that he knows, that's, right? So he wouldn't true, want true. to... Mm-hmm like get rid of the the board or any moment because he made the point right he said lauren i'm not going to be that's the true. one to touch your board you have to be the one to throw it away when they had the conversation in front of the board so i feel like tristan won't actually mm-hmm. get rid of it but him getting rid of it would make it yeah. very hard for lauren to keep sandman's condition so yeah that's true it could go either way i think oh okay speaking of tristan we know that the leader we know mm-hmm. that lauren's parents <laughs> Like, yeah, see, that's the big the question, right? Ever since Tristan was first introduced in episode 9, this has been one of the biggest questions. Yeah, but we got new information yeah. on the leader, for sure. And it's that Lauren's parents were close to the leader, and they knew him personally. And that makes you want to, mm-hmm. like, look at Tristan even closer now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it kind of goes with the people that are at mm-hmm. their funeral, right? It was Dakin. And? Tristan. Yeah. Hawks. Stefan. <laughs> all all three of them are sus. Thank <laughs> Like, we, we don't we don't know we don't know who is doing what i don't yeah. think dakin is the one that's actually that's, yeah he's, the leader because you know he yeah. wouldn't be the one with the yeah and i was thinking he doesn't seem um, like dakin, a uh, i'll be real like, <laughs> yeah he's got and pretty he's eyes so like matter. he's obviously very passionate about the issues going on in great chapel right and like the mismanagement and then i feel like if he was the leader mm-hmm. he would we one thing we know about the leader is that the leader hasn't done anything major for the past 10 years ever since the atst and if Dakin was the leader, then yeah. he would have yeah. been a lot faster with his plans. That's what I think. So I don't think he's That's actually true. the leader. But this um this train of thought led me to the idea of like what if Dakin is actually like Apostle Seven, the one who's like going rogue against the leader. I'm not sure. This is very oh, shaky. Okay. It's okay. just because I know that Apostle Seven is the one who's oh. become impatient with the leader, right? He wants to get things done. He's just doing it on his own terms now. Yeah. And, like, of all people who are, like, suspected to be fan of sides or, like, 
suspicious. I think Dakin or Dak. I can't. I've never learned how to pronounce his name. <laughs> but um, I said Dakin. I always say yeah. Dakin, but I mean, and, but you know, we're I reading think it, so is it's one fine. Of the prime suspects <laughs> for that, you know, you make a good point. I hadn't thought about of him as an apostle. The only two <laughs> that were in my head as an apostle yeah. were. Stefan and uh, oh, Radcl- yeah, Radcliffe, Radcliffe, right? He's he's also a a, a big suspect mm-hmm. because, like, first of all, he's the boss of the circus. Exactly, but I don't think I don't think Redcliffe mm-hmm. is Apostle Seven because that's going. I feel. Oh no, maybe it's not going contradictory because yeah. Histia would yeah. fight for the circus, so he <laughs> is. Okay, and another okay. thing is that never mind um, then. <laughs> we saw Bella with in the flash. <laughs> like we know Bella did grow up in Great Chapel, probably, right? Because we saw the flashback with her, with the match. And there mm-hmm. was, like, an older yeah. man who, like, walked up to her and, like, offered her, probably, like, to an offer to join the circus. And I'm inclined to believe that that is Redcliffe. Yeah. Yeah, because he's what we found in the circus. Okay. Right? From a bad Great Chapel yeah. killed, kids, killed, killed. <laughs> I was mixing up kids, kids, kid kids and children. Kids. Yeah, okay. Too much death. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. like, I I think Redcliffe, he's going to be more important in the future. Like, just seeing how much he's been involved so far in the background. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. When we get closer to yeah. the banquet, yeah. the banquet is where yeah. I yeah. think he'll play Another thing is that he's the one who's holding the banquet for everyone, for all the important figures in Artelis. Right? Like... Um, this mm-hmm. banquet was mentioned yeah. like in episode seven, and Herman mentioned that like, oh, many important figures yeah. of nobility are going to be there, so we have to be there to like be on our best behavior, stuff like that. The banquet is getting blown. <laughs> there's know, there's no blown. way there's like, the thing, they're not the getting thing. like. <laughs> for, that's what everyone thinks. We all think that mm-hmm. the banquet's gonna get blown up, right? But um, on the um mm-hmm. Phantom Side server, I. I forgot who it was, but I'm giving credit to them. They brought up the point that for the ATST, it, mm-hmm. the everyone thought that they were going to blow up the palace. So then they reinforced the palace wrongly. And that's how they were able to blow up the train station instead. Oh. So I'm not too sure about this. Yeah, so that's so what like, I'm target? wondering about. Like, it, there is, I feel like there could be a possibility that the banquet isn't the true target. Because it's honestly a bit obvious, you know, like even with like even not as a reader who can see everything, yeah. even like in, from Lauren's point of view, like the banquet is being held by Redcliffe, who is the owner of the circus, who who uh, and the circus members involved include Belladonna, who is a literal fan side member. And then we also yeah. know that this banquet has many important figures of the nobility attending and it's a huge event for everyone and it's also uh, taking place three days after the last shipment of nitroglycerin arrives right so it, it feels too obvious you know yeah so i don't know if we're just overthinking this or if there's something more to it huh that's actually very interesting <sighs> uh, i feel like once we try to get maybe if we get an idea yeah. of what the second target is i can see it like uh, for me mm-hmm. I, I didn't really like count on the banquet itself but i feel like something is like something's going to get blown up because we kind of need yeah. the repetition of yeah. season one again right lauren and kirian know information but they still can't do anything even after oh so many years like i feel like that has to play oh going so into you're expecting three. the you're expecting the bomb to go off but i see wait continue yes yeah, so i'm expecting it to wow, end wait, in this is interesting Right, because we get all these hints, especially in the mm-hmm. end of Camellia, where Lauren is freaking out. Right, she's like, "Oh, like yeah. again, I know information, but I don't have yeah. enough to actually take action." And this is going to reinforce everything oh that's God. been building up. Like, just like yeah. how we had the initial, like the prologue mm-hmm. where she saves the bomb in that small incident with the Homestead Theater, to the finale mm-hmm. where she doesn't, even though she was little. That, like kind of cycle is going to happen again that's a very good point actually because for me but i think you're right yeah i think you're right that it it might not be on at the banquet itself but i do think people are going to die okay you brought up a really good point though because i was just i was expecting lauren Mm -hmm. and kieran to be able to like defuse the bomb in time because I just feel like a bomb mm-hmm. of that scale would just be too devastating, you know? Like, everyone would die. Like, it would be, like, so much trauma and so much damage that I don't know how they would recover from that, right? So that's just, like, so I didn't yeah. think too deeply about it. I will just kind of assume that they would be able to solve it, right? It would be very intense, but they would make it out in the end. 
right? But if the bomb does go mm-hmm. off, that's a lot more interesting because that and it ties in with Hecate's yeah. prophecy, right? And wait, um, which part of the prophecy actually? The, the ending where it's like death? this is the chance for a new beginning with oh. death, right? I I felt that it was oh. a, both a death of Lauren's character as well as physical death that occurs, That's true. like both of them That's happening true. together. Yeah. And yeah, that actually um, goes along with what I was going to say. And it's that like, if this bomb does go off and Lauren realizes that she failed for the second time, this would probably be her lowest, this would probably be her lowest point in the entire story, right? She would be Mm -hmm. like completely devastated and like, she wouldn't know what to do next. And I think if season... And actually (laughs) thinking, thinking about it more, this will kind of parallel the transformation that Snapdragon went into Phantom Sight oh. that Lauren goes into oh, she, wherever she becomes. Yeah, right? Like Dark Lauren, Dark Lauren, everyone's, everyone's up for Dark Lauren. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's probably yeah. going to happen. No. But yeah, this thing. To some and degree. I feel like if maybe like around the end of season two, because we need to like, obviously like oh, Purple Hyacinth is a overall story, right? But each individual season has its mm-hmm. own like climax and its own arc, right? And if yep. this bomb is going to be the climax and of the season two story, I think that would be perfect, right? Like if the bomb, like yep. the climax is them trying to defuse the bomb, but they fail, and then season two ends with that failure. I feel like that would be almost that would be perfect, actually, like a perfect setup for season three. Yeah, and we can either have a time skip yeah. or yeah. it comes and right I, after the bombing, and we see what what the aftermath. And of that I think is. this type of uh, development is actually like common in stories. I'm not sure if it's a real thing or not, but like even like if you think about Avatar, you know, um, at the end of book two, wait, mm-hmm. uh, should I? We don't care about spoilers for Avatar, do we? No, I can I can put up yeah, like right, a spoiler yeah. warning. Okay, spoilers for book two of Avatar. Section, so, yeah. If you haven't watched it, go watch it right now. Okay, anyways, <laughs> at the end of go book ahead. two, that's the lowest point for Aang, right? He just got struck by Azula's lightning, mm-hmm. and he's pretty much like half dead. And he only survived because Katara can revive him with the um, healing water, right? And then this, we, mm-hmm. we start season three with him like going through a crisis and like lose, like failing to like get the motivation to like become who he is, become the avatar and like save the world, right? And then mm-hmm. like I feel like if Purple Hyacinth follows like a similar structure, I feel like it would be really effective as a story and to see like. Mm-hmm. And to give Lauren and all the other characters the opportunity for growth. Pretty much. I agree. Especially since Kirin is kind of her crutch to humanity, yeah. right? Lauren is almost willing to sacrifice anything for the truth. So this would fit yeah. with her theme wow. going forward. Okay, now I'm hoping this happens. This would be amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But our authors have always found ways to subvert us. So, I mean, even even after all this thinking, like, uh, I, we don't know what's actually in store for us. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, I have one more point I wanted to bring up, just in terms of what we've, what's mm-hmm. going on so far. So, right now, the main focus is trying to defuse the bomb, right? Trying to stop Apostle Seven's plans. Yes. And the thing is... Purple Hyacinth started out because Lauren and Kieran both hate, both want to take down the side and the leader, right? Yeah. But now we know for a fact that Apostle Seven is acting against the leader's wishes, and Apostle Seven, like stopping Apostle Seven, isn't necessarily against helps the leader against the leader, and it might help the leader, right? And right yeah. now the whole stopping, like stopping the bomb, saving Arterless, it seems like a very typical like non-personal save the world kind of thing to to be happening but Mm -hmm. we both know that lauren and kieran are driven by their personal motivations and these personal motivations have been a thing since the very beginning it's what caused them to make their deal so this one like these personal motivations and the personal grudge against the fam side and the leader it's not gonna just be gone for the sake of the save the world stop the bomb trope right no that's true so i'm hoping or like i'm suspecting that as they continue their investigation and get closer and closer to the truth, I feel like they're going to go through some uncertainty or some doubt because they might find out that maybe, maybe like, I, I actually, I have no idea like what that, what's actually going to happen, but these are just like random ideas, but like mm-hmm. maybe Apostle 7 plan, maybe they know, they realize that the leader is going to die in the bomb too, in the bombing too. Or maybe they realize that, hmm. 
stopping Apostle Seven is going to help the leader or something like that, right? It's just a conflict of personal interest yeah. and like, like saving the world. And I don't like, I'm not going to judge what they choose, like, or anything, but I just want to see some kind of personal conflict getting pulled into this overall big thing, big overarching conflict. I agree. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping. On, on top of just personal conflicts, right? We have so many different groups and moving pieces that they're all going to play into it. I mean, my hope is always Athena gets involved somehow, <laughs> but like we, we set up the circus members, right? And they're going to be at the banquet yeah. or maybe they're not all at the banquet and they're at the second site. And since they don't have their paint and masks, we, they just look like regular people. So we won't recognize them immediately. Yeah. I think there's a lot at play. Mm -hmm. We still don't even know any of the other like active apostles, yeah. right? Like we, we saw messenger four. We don't yeah. know who or what apostle four mm -hmm. wants to do. Right, so they could get involved at any yeah. point. And we don't even know how many apostles are still alive. Wait, no, we do, right? There are 13 of them? No. We know that yeah. seven are active. Man, yeah. this is just so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is why I love PH. It's just so much to think about and so much to like get invested in. Oh, man. And like, there's so many plot points that still mm -hmm. haven't been addressed so far in the yeah. second half right the biggest one that i can think about is the you know kyrian's friend who can yeah, who's right? a forger like that, that was brought up all the way in 52 and we haven't oh. yeah we haven't oh. hit hit that uh, plot yeah. point yet so it'll come and in another at some thing point is like kyrian's whole mission with trying to like killing loon right like that's still a thing and that's still a very yes. urgent thing because other Otherwise, Leo's going to get suspicious. Like, we still have that to deal with, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, finding dead bodies in Grey Chapel and huh. all that. <laughs> Man. Huh. Yeah. This <laughs> is a stressful time to be Lauren and Kieran. It is. And we are in for the ride to see what happens to them, whether good or bad. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, we're, we're not the ones in this situation. We can empathize with them, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, we want to see what happens. <laughs> okay. All right. So I feel like that's a pretty yeah. good ending point, unless you have some mm -hmm. like final remarks that oh, you want to talk about. I think about. one more thing I had in mind. This is just one thing, right? Just that Stefan Hawks. Yeah. The worst dad so far we've seen. Uh, he, Awful dad. I think he, I, you, you, you were suspecting him of like fam side involvement, right? But I thought he was Apostle Four. Oh, really? Four. Apostle Four, the one. Wait, mm -hmm. he who deals with assassinations. I think that's why I've said right. Mm -hmm. any particular yeah. reason for that or it's just that we had messenger four there's one apostle left oh. that's where i signed it there <laughs> there's no like real mm -hmm. like it's just head ganon at this point too. so for me just looking at who he is he used to be the chief of police right before he gave it over to tristan yeah and mm -hmm. he was likely the one in charge of the orion and sons massacre that's what i'm thinking because we know that Oh, right? yeah. Because it was the police. Because it was, uh, what, Elizabeth that ordered the she police to go there? The, um, the socialists, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, he also said at the funeral for Lauren's parents, he said there was never a disagreement we couldn't settle, but that was a lie. So he had some yeah. differences. He, he There was some sort of conflict going on between him and Lauren's parents. And it would make sense if he was the one to, like, massacre the snap the members of snapdragon i think which would upset yeah exactly our lauren's yeah. parents yeah <laughs> right and thinking about that i feel like i don't see a reason for him to be in the fam side because he was likely the people like the people actively up like suppressing them you know mm -hmm. and then he seems yeah, to okay. support like he seems to support the current system, right? He wants Lauren, he wants Will to marry someone rich, Darcy's girl, whatever, right? He wants Lauren, Will to stop being involved with Lauren yeah. because she's like she's too crazy. Like Will, you have to be a proper son, be the noble, like the rich son you're supposed to be. Don't like meddle with commoners, stuff like that, right? He seems like he seems very like traditional, and mm -hmm. he doesn't seem to have a problem with the system. He gladly served his role as the chief of police, mm -hmm. and he probably supports the monarchy, stuff like that. Right. So taking all yeah. that into account, I actually think he might just be who he is on the surface. Huh. You know? Interesting. So what do you think his like job is right oh. now as chief? Right. Like or he not <laughs> after <laughs> chief. Right. He still goes out and does something. What do you think he's doing? Honestly, don't know. Maybe. Hmm. 
well, we can we can assume that he left chief of police not to retire, right? Or wait, probably me... probably to retire after the train bombing, right? Okay. Like true, but wait, I I think he got the blame oh, for the yeah, train bombing. Yeah, that makes sense, definitely. They reinforce the wrong mm -hmm. location. Train gets blown up. Yeah, people die. The chief of police should take responsibility mm -hmm. for that. Oh, uh, let's. Okay, I'm just scrolling down to see if he mentioned anything about like his position. Yeah, yeah I don't. I don't. Yeah, he wants Will to become colonel. Blah blah. blah. Discipline and image must be beyond <laughs> stuff like that. Everything counts. There's no time for any idiocies <laughs> like a so-called <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, he's, he's so, so extra. extra. Wow, like, he's such a salty old man. Befriending the Sinclair's daughter is a waste of time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Uh. Blah blah. blah Darcy's girl. Blah, blah blah. Huh? I don't think. I don't think he's said anything. Yeah, I don't think it's actually mentioned so, what he does. He's right. Retired or he has a new position or anything. It mm -hmm. would be. I'm sure it'll get brought up at um, some point. It would point, be interesting but... if he was like I don't know like. Maybe some kind of advisor to like, maybe not to the king, but or like some kind of high rank person, like working for the monarchy. I feel like for someone so high to be chief of police, yeah. the to go any higher, you would have to like be like within the ranks of the monarchy, right? Pretty much. Some sort of like, a, like you said, some sort of advisory yeah, yeah. role in some <laughs> essence, because we don't know much about the hierarchy of the mm -hmm. monarchy, right? Other than. We have the king, we have the queen, we have the bratty <laughs> prince, and then we have Dak yeah. and the right hand man. Outside of that, we don't yeah, we exactly. don't know anything else. Oh, and, and there's a spy True. master. We still know who that is either. Uh, I suspect yeah. that that's probably yeah. an apostle. I suspect I that we'll be seeing more figures being introduced because honestly, at the way it is now, the only two suspects we can narrow down would be Tristan and Dakin, right? And then Tristan and Dakin, mm -hmm. we know that they have, like, they're very closely, uh, they, they work together closely, they're good friends. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so, I feel like we we need some more suspects to widen our, our the cast that we can look at. That's true, and we haven't gotten an introduction for a while, right? Uh, outside of the big, like, mm -hmm. circus members in 51, we haven't really gotten that yeah. many characters to work. Exactly. And... Oh, I was going to wonder if, like, Robin the a thing, but he died, right? <laughs> yeah, he was confirmed dead. He died, yeah. Say confirmed that he's yeah. dead, so I, I feel <laughs> like he's dead. But again, we also have yeah, the Forger, so... Uh, we'll keep that in mind, too. All right. Yeah. I think that's all, actually. Solid. So uh, tell us where we can find you social media-wise. I know you have a YouTube Thank channel, you. which I'll link. Into so, the description. Yeah. So um I have an Instagram account, L A N X Y U U, and you should see it immediately. And if you want to ever talk to me about pH or anything, yeah, sure, you can message me there. And also, um, I'm also a mod on the fandom side server. Fandom, fandom side, not phantom, fandom side. And uh oh you can, <laughs> fandom, you can like yeah. uh, if they're interested, um you can find a link to that on the P Purple Hyacinth wiki page. And you can do it if you're... Oh, yeah, because yeah. that's linked so together, right? So if you're a right? fan yeah. and you want to chill with really cool people, you can feel free to join us there, too. It's quite fun. And lots There's of a lot of memes and tons of theories <laughs> yeah. and lots of screaming. We also share yeah. a single brain cell, which is very fun. Yes, Vlad or Brad or <laughs> yeah, whatever. whatever <laughs> the yeah. name of the brain cell is. All right, and that's it. Solid. Well, I will see you on probably Monday online in the server talking about <laughs> 56 or 71 or whatever. Mentally recover from this trauma. All right. Um, <laughs> yes. She has, she always has a lot on her plate. All right. Thank no you problem. So much. And I really want to thank you for giving me this opportunity. It's, it was my first time doing anything like this. And it's really fun to be able to theorize out loud with a person. All right. That's awesome. I'm glad I could be that little <laughs> yep. platform. Okay. Thank for you so much. I look forward to any future discussion Peace. we might have.